हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू रेड शिक्षण संस्था सातारा रोज प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ इलेवन साइंस कंडक्टेड बाय यशवंतराव चवान इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस सातारा वी आर स्टडिंग टॉपिक नंबर सिक्स फ्रॉम इलेवन फिजिक्स मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सॉलिड्स In today's lecture, we will study these two points. First point, types of stress and strain, and second point, Hooke's law. So, let us see types of stress and strain. There are three different types of stress and strain. we will study these types of stress and strain one by one let us see the first type of stress which is called as tensile stress or longitudinal stress this stress means when a deforming force acting along length of a body then stress produced in that body is called as tensile stress or longitudinal stress and corresponding strain produced in that body is called as tensile strain or longitudinal strain let us see about first tensile stress or longitudinal stress let us consider this figure in this figure this is a wire whose original length is capital l and a be the area of cross section of wire so this is the area of cross section of the wire now here force f is applied to one end of wire so at this end of wire force f is applied a force f bar is applied in this direction now we see that this force is acting along the length of this wire and it is acting perpendicular to area of cross section of the wire due to this applied force f bar at one of its end wire gets elongates that means there is a increase in length of the wire let that increase in length of the wire or change in length of the wire is delta l so here delta l is the change in length of the wire due to the applied force f bar now we know the formula for stress it is applied force per unit area so here we can write tensile stress is equal to applied force on wire upon area of cross section so here applied force on wire is f bar and a be the area of cross section of wire so we can write tensile stress is equal to modulus of f bar upon a we are considering here magnitude of force f bar now here force f bar is nothing but the load so here f is load means force and that load is equal to mg here m is the mass of the wire and g is the acceleration due to gravity now here if r is the radius of the wire then we get area of cross section of wire as a is equal to pi r square now substituting equation of force that is load 
is equal to mg and area of cross section of wire a is equal to pi r square in the equation of tensile stress we get equation for tensile stress in the form of f means load and area of cross section of wire as it is equal to mg upon pi r square so this is all about tensile stress now let us see the next point which is about compressive stress compressive stress means the longitudinal stress produced due to decrease in length of the body is called as compressive stress it is also defined as the restoring force per unit area let us consider this figure in this figure this is a rod whose original length is capital l now at the both the ends of the rod a force f is applied like this and this force is applied such a that at both the ends force acting is equal in magnitude but their directions are opposite now due to this force what happens rod is pushed in inward direction and because of that length of the rod decreases what happens length of the rod decreases so here delta l is the length is the decrease in length of the rod and due to decrease in length of the rod stress produced in that rod is called as compressive stress now let us write equation for compressive stress it is also defined as restoring force per unit area so here f is the restoring force and a be the area of cross section of the rod therefore we can write here equation for compressive stress as it is equal to f upon a that is force upon area now here si unit for compressive stress and longitudinal or tensile stress is same that is it is equal to newton per meter square so this is all about compressive stress now let us see the first type of strain which is called as tensile strain or longitudinal strain let us consider this figure in this figure this is a wire whose original length is capital l and a b its area of cross section now at one end of the wire a force a bar is applied so at this end force a bar is applied on the wire we see that this force is acting along the length of the wire and perpendicular to its area of cross section now due to this applied force what happens wire elongates tichi length ka hote increase hote because of applied force f let here that increase in length of the wire or change in length of the wire is delta l now we know the definition of strain strain is defined as it is ratio of change in dimensions per unit original dimensions so as per its definition we can write here tensile strain is equal to as here it is related to change in length so we can write here change in length per unit original length here change in length is delta l original length is capital l and therefore we get here equation for tensile strain as 
it is equal to delta L upon L. So this is all about tensile strain or longitudinal strain. Now, let us see second type of stress, which is called as volume stress or hydraulic stress. This stress means if a deforming force acting on a body produces change in its volume, then stress produced in the body is called as volume stress and corresponding strain produced in the body is called as volume strain. Let us first see about volume stress. Let us consider this figure. In this figure, this is a spherical body. Let here A be the surface area of this spherical body. Let here V be the original volume of this spherical body. Now, on this spherical body, on its entire surface, a force F bar is acting perpendicular. So here, this is the force F bar. Like this, this force F bar or force is acting on the entire surface of this body in a perpendicular direction. So due to this force, what will happen? Half force, ya spherical body cha entire surface worthy perpendicularly act hote. Kya mulo kai hui? Half force ex externally act hote. Kya mule? Kya body cha volume madhe badal hui. And kya vres body cha volume madhe badal hui? Kya vres ticha pressure madhe dekhil badal hui. Ata ya thikani. या बॉडी ची वॉल्यूम काय होना रहे अप्लाइड फोर्स मुझे डिक्रीज होना रहे त्यावेस बॉडी में दिल जे इंटरनल प्रेशर आ है ते क्या होना रहे इंक्रीज होना रहे सो हियर डीपी इज़ द इंक्रीज इन प्रेशर ऑफ़ दिस स्पेरिकल बॉडी ड्यू टू दी अप्लाइड फोर्स एफ व्हेन इट्स अ वॉल्यूम डिक्रीजेस इंक्रीज होते त्यावेस तीस प्रेशर डिक्रीज होता या ठीक नहीं मात्रा जावेस वॉल्यूम डिक्रीज होती है त्यावेस प्रेशर इंक्रीज होते इंटरनल प्रेशर इंक्रीजेस नाउ वी नो द फॉर्मूला फॉर स्ट्रेस इट इज अप्लाइड फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया सो हियर वी गेट इक्वेशन फॉर वॉल्यूम स्ट्रेस इज इक्वल टू here we are applying this force tangentially to the entire surface of the body. Therefore, we can write volume stress is equal to applied force upon area. So let us find here applied force means internal restoring force of this spherical body. Here dp is the change in pressure. Now we know the equation for pressure. Pressure is equal to force upon area. Here force is F, area is A, and pressure is DP. So DP is equal to F upon A. And therefore we get F is equal to DP into A. And this is the internal restoring force. A into DP or DP into A. Substitute this equation of applied force means internal restoring force in this equation. And on substituting and solving, we get volume stress is equal to DP. That is change in pressure. Let us see what is mean by hydraulic or hydrostatic volume stress. 
volume stress produces change in size without change in shape of a body then such a stress is called as hydraulic or hydrostatic volume stress here SI unit for volume stress is as it is applied force per unit area it is newton per meter square so this is all about volume stress now let us see the second type of strain which is called as volume strain let us consider this figure in this figure we know that this is a spherical body whose area of cross section is a sorry its a surface area is a and we be the original volume of this spherical body now on the entire surface of this spherical body a force f is acting perpendicularly so force f is acting perpendicularly on the entire surface of this spherical body due to this force what happens there is a decrease in volume or change in volume of the spherical body here delta v is the change in volume or decrease in volume of the body and it is accompanied with change in pressure dp now we know the formula for strain it is change in dimensions per unit original dimensions so here as volume strain is related to change in volume we can write equation for volume strain as it is equal to change in volume per unit original volume change in volume is delta v original volume is v and therefore we get volume strain is equal to delta v upon v so this is all about volume strain now let us see third type of stress which is called as shearing stress if deforming force acting on a body produces change in shape of a body then stress produced in that body it's called as shearing stress and corresponding strain produced it's called as shearing strain let us first see about shearing stress let us consider this figure in this figure this a b c d is the front face of the cube it is one of the front face of the cube ab is the bottom layer and cd is the top layer or upper layer let here capital l be the original length of each side of face of the cube now here a bar is the tangential force and this tangential force a bar is applied to top layer cd keeping bottom layer ab fix so ha a bar tangential force ya direction madhe ya direction madhe टॉप लेयर सी डी वरती एप्लाय बॉटम लेयर ए बी फिक्स टेन्जेन्शियल फोर्स एफ मु टॉप लेयर सी डी गेट डिस्प्लेसेस टू द न्यू पोजिशन सी डैश डी डैश थ्रू ए स्मॉल एंगल थीटा एंड देर इज ए चेंज इन शेप ऑफ फेस ऑफ cube 
Now that cube is means face of the cube is A B C dash D dash. Here this C C dash and D D dash is the distance, and this distance is represented by symbol delta L. And here delta L is called as relative displacement or displaced length of the top layer CD from a fixed distance, that is from a fixed bottom layer AB. Now here, sharing stress is defined as restoring force per unit area developed due to the applied tangential force. Manjets kai? Tarjavares top layer CD worthy tangential force F apply kela zail, keeping bottom layer AB fixed. Tavares ya heje ABCD front face of cuba he, techa made tangential force mure internal restoring force develop way. Anito restoring force per unit area due to the applied tangential force manjes kaya he, shearing. Stress. Now we know the equation for stress. It is applied force per unit area. Here, force applied is tangential force. So, st sharing stress is equal to tangential force upon area. And on substituting here the equation for tangential force and that of area, we get here equation for sharing stress as it is equal to. Modulus of F bar upon A. So this is all about shearing stress. Now, let us see the third type of strain, which is called as shearing strain. Let us consider this figure. In this figure, we know that a, B, C, D is the front face of the cube. A, B is the bottom layer. C, D is the top layer or upper layer. Capital L be the length of each face of the, each side of face of the cube. Now, a tangential force, a bar is applied to the top layer. CD keeping bottom layer AB fixed. So in this direction, tangential force is applied. Due to this force, what happen? Top layer CD get displaces to the new position C dash D dash through a small angle theta. Now here, the distance C C dash D D dash is called as relative displacement of top layer with respect to a fixed bottom layer AB. And this distance is represented by symbol delta L. Now, shearing strain is defined as the ratio of relative displacement of any layer to its a perpendicular distance from fixed layer. Here, Relative displacement of the top layer is delta L, and it's a perpendicular distance from the fixed layer AB is capital L. So we can write here equation for sharing strain as sharing strain is equal to, as per its a definition, relative displacement upon distance from fixed layer. Relative displacement is delta L, distance from fixed layer is L, and therefore we get sharing strain is equal to delta L upon capital L. Now, in this figure, let us consider one triangle, which is triangle A, D, D dash. A, D, D dash triangle. In this triangle, let us find tan theta. We can also find uh, tan theta in the triangle B, 
C, C dash. Now, if we find here tan theta, we get tan theta is equal to delta L upon capital L. Tan theta means it is opposite side upon adjacent side. Opposite side is represented by delta L. Adjacent side is represented by capital L. So we get here tan theta is equal to delta L upon capital L. So here delta L is very small and therefore tan theta is equivalent to theta. And therefore we can write sharing strain is equal to theta. That means angle of shear. So this is all about third type of strain, shearing strain. Now, let us see the next point, which is Hooke's law. Let us see first statement of the law. The law states that within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. In the form of equation, we can write stress directly proportional to strain. Rearranging this equation, we get stress upon strain is equal to constant. Here, this constant is called as modulus of elasticity. And therefore, we can write modulus of elasticity is equal to stress upon strain. And from this equation, we can define modulus of elasticity as it is the ratio of stress to the corresponding strain. SI unit for modulus of elasticity is Newton per meter square. As we know that strain has no unit and dimensions. So modulus of elasticity has same unit and dimensions as that of the stress. So its SI unit is Newton per meter square and dimensions as that of the stress as L raise to minus one, m raised to 1, t raised to minus 2. Now, if we plot the graph of stress against strain within elastic limit, then nature of the graph is like this. We see that graph is a straight line passing through the origin, which indicates that stress is directly proportional to strain. Now, if we find here slope of the graph, then that slope is equal to stress upon strain. As per definition of slope, we get here slope is equal to stress upon strain. And we know that this ratio, stress upon strain, it's called as modulus of elasticity. So from the slope of the graph, modulus of elasticity is also defined as, it is the slope of stress-strain curve in the elastic deforming region. Now, let us see what is mean by elastic limit. Elastic limit means the maximum value of stress up to which stress is directly proportional to strain. Then it is called as elastic limit. And if the deforming force exceeds the elastic limit, what will happen? Body will acquire a permanent set or deformation. We know that deformation means change in shape and size or both. 
and when body acquires a permanent set or deformation it is said to be over strain so this is all about hooks law